in some ways this is going to be a super simple tutorial because I want to talk about you know basically what makes up the breathing system the respiratory system the first thing I guess I want to do is I want to talk about the entry points of how air gets into our respiratory system and we've got the labels here of mouth and nasal cavity I'm going to just tweak that you're very welcome to use nasal cavity but we can equally just say nose effectively we draw air in of course through pressure changes we draw air in either through our mouth or our nose we can't do both simultaneously give it a try if you want it's quite interesting uh, anyway you might end up with something like that um that was not a good noise was it <laughs> don't do that in front of you, in front of anyone that's sensitive to noise now then air is drawn in to our respiratory system where does it pass next well it passes next through this sort of thick kind of tube all the way down here and i want to draw your attention to these little white rings here we have got the trachea or the trachea sometimes people pronounce it that way but it's made up of these rings now these are rings of cartilage okay rings of cartilage in fact specifically it's called hyaline cartilage but we won't worry about that too much and a couple of things i really want to stress there is no gaseous exchange here no gaseous exchange in other words this is a completely non-permeable structure it is a passageway it is a tube this this track here does a bit of filtering work and it does a little bit of cleaning work but not a great deal okay but these rings of cartilage form this very very kind of tough structure now i don't want to get into the sort of like sort of grottiness about why this needs to be such a tough structure but just bear in mind that this area of the body is very very close to the surface at the neck and of course if this was to be damaged this pipe it would be a serious problem uh, for someone who then wouldn't be able to effectively breathe in and out um, so that's why this needs to be such a tough and robust structure because it's very close to the surface of the body now you'll notice that our next structure is what we call a bronchus now please notice that we are pointing specifically to one bronchus. If this label here had sort of branched out and also labeled this one, we would call these the bronchi, okay? Because bronchus is one and bronchi is two. And the key thing I want you to be aware of with the bronchi is they separate the air that's coming in into left and right channels. In other words, they lead the air into either the left lung, which is this one, or the right lung, which is this one. Okay, so that's the role of the bronchi. Individually, they're called a bronchus. Now, these bron uh, a bronchus then breaks down into these individual kind of, let me do a different color. Uh, let me go somewhere dark. These kind of passageways and these finger-like structures over here, they're all over the lungs. These are obviously what are called bronchioles. And I like to describe them, I'll do it in yellow. I like to describe them as sub branches okay sub branches and the branches are a nice way sort of plant like tree like structure it is a nice way to think about it. inverted upside down of course in this case and where do they lead they sub branch and they ultimately lead to the alveoli this is a plural by the way now we're going to come to the alveoli now so remember alveoli is plural one alveolus which we can see pictured here this is the singular now these alveoli are very interesting they are air sacs okay so let me let me choose i don't like that color to use twice don't know why it matters but let's go for something like an orange they are air sacs and they are the ultimate destination for the air that passes into the lung that's why we, that's where we're trying to get that that air to they are one cell thick they are also the site of exchange so this is actually where geisha exchange will take place i'm going to come back to them just briefly before we finish today but before we do that and go into a little bit more detail on alveoli and i want to give you a bit of information i just want you to draw your attention to this muscle here this muscle is the diaphragm okay and you'll see it's actually the base of the thoracic cavity the base of the chest you know if you imagine this whole chest is surrounded by lungs uh, sorry surrounded by ribs like this the base of this cavity, this opening, this hollowness in the chest, is actually the diaphragm muscle itself. And the key thing I want you to be aware of with the diaphragm, if I sort of draw it out here, let's choose a lovely aqua blue. What the key thing I want you to be aware of with the diaphragm is that it contracts muscle of course skeletal muscle it contracts and this causes inhalation i'll give you a bit more detail on this in a second and when it relaxes it causes exhalation now these are not the only muscles to do this but the ones we're going to focus on but i just want to stress here that when this muscle contracts this diaphragm muscle what it does is it's not dome shaped like this anymore it flattens down into this position now look what's happened to that overall chest cavity now it is now bigger because this muscle has flattened down to here it increases the area inside the chest air pressure inside the chest goes down air rushes in from the outside 
um, world. That is inhalation. When it domes back during relaxation, the exact opposite takes place and exhalation or the forcing the forceful movement of air out of the lungs takes place okay so i want you to be aware of that with the diaphragm there are other muscles involved as well now this is not a lesson or a tutorial about gaseous exchange but i just want to touch on an alveolus one more time if i spelled it right it would always help wouldn't it alveolus there you go even the teachers screw it up, guys. Don't worry about it. Alveolus. Here we go. So here, this blue outline here is an alveolus, a single one of multiple alveoli, okay? And I just want to stress a couple of important points. We'll come back to this in future lessons. But the key part I want to make to you is it has a partially permeable membrane. Now, the reason I'm really raising that with you guys here is not because that term is even considered a particularly important term in GCSE PE, but that term is very important for you guys studying biology, as you know, because it is one of the constituent um, components of the process of diffusion. And that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. Now, I know you're studying diffusion in quite a bit of detail and rates of diffusion in biology. The other thing I just want to mention to you, of course, it's surrounded by capillaries. And both the capillaries and the alveolus are both partially permeable membranes and it is for that reason that gaseous exchange can take place more of which in the next tutorial cheers